Hello! In this video I'd like to show you the different types of joints that we use in cutout animation in Flash. This is Flash CS6 but it can be any version of Flash or Animate. And I'm also using EDAP tools. Now if you're unfamiliar with Flanimate power tools make sure you check out our website. There are basically three types of joints that we use in character animation. The most universally used one is the joint which is based on two overlapping perfect circles. So if I disassemble this bit here, if we go in outline mode, you can see that there are circles defining this joint. If I snap this lower arm back into position and use Kineflex to rotate, you will see this joint never breaks. This is the arm of our Kinefox character. We can bend it, we can keep bending it and it will just never break. Here is the leg of the Kinefox, same story, two overlapping circles. The joint can be pushed very far and it will never break. Now this leg here, it's a wolf's hind leg, if we look at the outline mode you will see the first one the first part the area that connects to the pelvis is based on type 1 while here the knee has a smaller circle and two parts that don't perfectly overlap now let's look at how this thing looks in action so this is what i call type 2 joint See, it looks quite convincing up to a point and here it starts to break. So if we want to have a fully straightened knee, we will need to add extra states inside those two bits. But to a certain extent, it's quite, quite functional. Now this one here is based again on overlapping circles while the third bit here, the heel, is a sharp edge joint. It's another case of a joint that can work within certain limits. So as you can see we can push it, we can push it quite a lot but beyond a certain point those elements will start revealing that the joint breaks and we will need to go inside and add a second frame just to clean it up and make it work. This last leg here is the front leg of a horse. It's even more complicated because it has many more elements to it. The first one here, the shoulder blade connecting to the upper arm, we have two overlapping circles, so this is type 1 joint. The second one, the elbow, has a type 3 joint because we really needed this sharp edge here. And all the others are also type 1. So let's see this one in action. If we like to just stretch the leg backward, this one never breaks. Now this joint here can work to a certain degree stretching back this way but more importantly we would need this joint to bend forward because that's what this joint would normally do. Now see how Beyond a certain point, not only the joint breaks, but the leg just appears to be a little shorter. 
So we'll need to compensate for length. These other ones that are based on perfect circles, they never break and we can come up with some very nice poses. While with this one, we'll have to just go inside and fix the elements. I'll just demonstrate that very briefly. I'll go inside and work with this shape. All that I need to do is just push a little bit so that the breaking is not obvious and then I'll choose the second frame and move the leg kind of like this. Ideally I'll need a second bit inside this other part. Anyway so this is just the brief introduction of the types of joints. Number one, based on two perfectly overlapping circles. Number two, which still has a circle in it. And number three, where the elements join just in a point. So this was the theory. And now I'll demonstrate how these work with real characters in practice. First of all, you're probably all familiar with Kinefox. If you're not, you can download this character. It's a free download from our website. All of his joints are based on perfect circles, so it's very easy to pose him. Everything is circle-based in Kinefox. The next thing I'd like to show you is how we decide what kinds of joints we need. So here is a, a sketch of a jackal that I designed some time ago. This is the finished rig and here is a slightly lighter version of the sketch that we would now analyze. So the first thing I do when I am about to start preparing a rig is to define where my joints will be and what type of joints I will need for the different areas. So here we'll need a big circular joint separating the torso and the neck. We'll need another circular joint here defining the connection between the neck and the head. We'll need a circular joint somewhere here for the upper leg. Now the knee may have type 2 joint with a little circle just, just here and the elements will overlap like this and like this this one here the heel will be just type 3 joint and here we'll have another circular joint with the front leg it doesn't really matter how we treat this first part but the shoulder blade will have a form a shape kind of like this and then here we might have another type 2 that leads us to a bit that looks kind of like this that's the upper arm and the elbow would have another type 3 joint so the second bit will be kind of kind of like this and then here we'll have a full circle type 1 joint and another full circle here, another type one joint. So this is the quick analysis of all the joints and of course the tail. Just a quick recap, shoulder blade pivoting here, an element that goes like this 
and ends sharply here with one sharp joint here at the elbow another element that goes into a circle pivoting here this goes like this and another element that goes into a circle and then finally the foot will be just like this and now let's look at the final jackal if i go outlines this is more or less exactly what i did with one exception which um, i've just spotted here i went for a type 3 joint now let us look at how these joints actually function first one would be the neck and head articulation here you go pretty decent amount of travel before they break now shoulder blade front leg here we go can go quite far forward adjusting it now it can swing backward as well and now the back leg it can stretch just like this it can bend forward like this it this one type 3 will need an adjustment but it's otherwise it's very flexible let's look at it once more yeah i see why it was so difficult to grab this bit now let's just look at another character this is a little walk cycle here uh, nothing spectacular just a funny funny walk cycle now let's look at the hind legs this is another type 2 link it's the one that i demonstrated earlier on so you can see it looks quite natural to a certain extent it gives us a very good range of realistic and convincing movements so if I drag it to the side we can see better how it works up to this point it's just functioning perfectly well now it breaks but the range is pretty pretty good and with minimal correction you can get a lot of movement out of this type 2 so this is type 2 and this is type 3 this is type 2 and this is type 3 a reindeer this is how the neck and head function type 1 joint with front leg let's look at it so this is type 2 this is type 3 and all these others are type 1 here again type 1 type 2 type 3 and so on so if we decide to test this leg quite reasonably backward that much and then that much and it can travel a lot forward and all this looks quite quite natural we might need to move it a little bit lower but there's a lot of travel and a lot of reasonable range of movement so this is quite quite decent with swing swinging this one backward we can go like this and like this 
and like this and forward we can push that way and that way now you can see it breaks here we can just uh, compensate a little bit and we can get a lot of reasonable realistic posing without worrying too much about the joints another example here with this ostrich just a different type of creature but this leg here is based on three type one joints so here you go i've done the same trick with this heel here so i've i've added a little bit of edge to conceal the perfect roundness of the joint but you can see how convincing and how how well they articulate okay i'll i'll undo and i'll just play back this uh, walk cycle so that you can see it and just for a goodbye i'll show you this ballet walk that i did based on one of the strauss's famous waltzes called the blue danube